Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a look at their simpler device in Ableton Live 8. So we're just starting with a new live set. We're just going to grab hold of the simpler and chuck it onto a MIDI channel. We're just going to delete this audio channel because we're not going to need that for the moment. You may have seen this device before if you've seen our simple drums with Ableton Live tutorial which we looked at it briefly but we're going to have a bit more of an in-depth look today and see some of the, the quite interesting and handy features that it has available for manipulating your samples. So we'll start by grabbing hold of a sample and we'll just chuck that one into the sampler. Might start with a bit of a scratch noise and to be able to get that to play we'll just double click on an empty slot and as we can see we can now create a MIDI clip. So I'm just going to chuck a single note in there just so that we can hear the sample as a whole. By putting a note on C3 we'll actually get to hear the sample at its original pitch and by moving the note either up or down in a MIDI clip will give us either a higher or lower pitch with the sample. So to go back to the simpler we can either double click on the channel or you can use the shift tab shortcut which is quite handy. So if we play that one and as you can see it's just cutting it off when the MIDI clip loops, as we've only got a single bar there at the moment. So we might just go back into our MIDI clip and just adjust the length so it's slightly longer. That way we might hear a bit more of the sample. And we're also going to trim the sample a little bit just so that it's not playing that second half. You can adjust the start and the end of the sample just by adjusting the little handles as you can see which is handy if you wanted just to get one particular chunk out of the audio you could just adjust it like so and that is all it would play as you can see. That can be quite handy for getting some interesting glitchy sort of sounds happening. So we'll start over on the right hand side with our most simple controls starting with our volume. As you can see it's currently set at minus 12. Live will automatically turn it down a little bit so that you've got a bit of headroom to work with when you're adding effects or processing to the sound. You've also got a pan control, which allows you to adjust where in the stereo spectrum the sound appears. You can also add some randomness to that one with the random control, which is quite handy. If you're using a MIDI clip that has velocity data, you'll need to turn up the velocity in order to get it to have any effect. At the default of zero, any velocity data will pretty much be ignored at 100% the velocity will affect it as much as possible. You've also got a voices control to adjust how many individual instances of the sample can be playing at any one point in time as well as a button to adjust whether or not the sample is loaded into RAM. So if you're playing a lot of samples and your hard drive's struggling a bit you may want to get as many as possible into RAM or if you're running out of RAM then you can always just turn that button off and get some of them loaded back onto the hard drive so a bit of a balancing act there depending on what your computer is capable of. Up the top here we've got various different envelopes available for adjusting the attack, decay, sustain and release of the sound. For example if we wanted the sound to fade in a little bit we could just turn the attack up as you can hear. <laughs> Which is quite handy, especially if you want to go for more of a pad sound or if you want to try and cut off the initial transient of a sound. It can be handy with drum samples as we'll see in a little while. 
as well as the volume envelope you've also got a filter envelope and a pitch envelope which you can use to adjust the filter which we'll look at further in a little while as well as the pitch of the sound to use the filter and pitch envelopes you have to turn those ones on by clicking the little button as you can see the filter button is currently white because we haven't actually got the filter turned on down here just to the left of our envelopes, as you can see, we've got our sample start, loop, length, and fade controls. You can loop the sample by turning the loop button on, which will then highlight our loop control. So we could loop just that last little section if we wanted to, which is quite handy, as you can see there. So you can come up with all sorts of interesting things with that one. So we'll just turn our loop off for the moment. Just below those controls, as we mentioned before, is our filter, which we can turn on by clicking the little button there. And you can adjust the frequency and the resonance of the filter, just like pretty much any filter you'll come across. You can also adjust how much the velocity data in the MIDI clip is affecting the filter, and how much of the pitch of the notes that are being fed into the simpler is affecting the filter. As you can see at 100% the filter will be reacting as much as possible to the different notes it's being fed or you can turn that one off to keep the filter fairly static. You can also adjust the different types of filters. We've got a variety of low pass, band pass, high pass and a notch filter available there. So we'll just go for a bit of a band pass filter and see what sort of sound we can get happening with that one. which can, can be quite useful on its own, although it can also be quite handy to add a bit of extra movement to the filter. One of the handiest ways of doing that is by using our LFO, which is just to the right of the filter. Again, just have to turn that one on by clicking the little button there. And just like most LFOs you'll come across, pretty common features, including the ability to switch between either a fixed frequency or synchronize the LFO to the tempo of the host. You've also got an attack control to adjust how quickly the LFO comes in and starts acting on the sound. A re-trigger button to select whether or not you want the LFO to trigger from the start every time the simpler receives a new note or whether you just want it to keep running. And also adjust the waveform of the LFO, so different waves available there. We'll stick with a sine wave for the moment. Your control to adjust how quickly or how slowly the LFO works. So depending on whether you have the synchronized or the fixed frequency, depends on what sort of control you get there. You can also with this one, just like the filter, adjust how much of the pitch information of the incoming notes affects the LFO. For example, you could turn it up and a higher pitched note would actually give you a faster LFO, whereas a lower pitched note would give you a slower LFO. 